So here I am in a model shop and I'm gonna show you our styrofoam cutter from Woodland Scenics that I use a lot of and how to use it. And this is what we'll use to um, mold and form quite a bit of our terrain uh, for the base and for the foundation. Uh, it's, a, it's a Woodland Scenics ST 1435 hot wire foam cutter. I love these, they're great. Um, I use them up and they last quite a while. If you're doing simple model crafts, uh, they work wonderful. If you're doing something more industrial, you need a, a larger hot wire tool. So it comes with uh, two different armature arrangements. One is the full armature arrangement, and they just simply unscrew for the tension screw. So I said simply, there it goes, and lifts out. And then this is what I just referred to as the half armature. And we simply slide it in and tighten it down. So your span, is shorter, it's half the distance, and you can get in for tighter cuts on your foam. I personally like the wider, full armature spread. Uh, that's just what I use, it's what I'm familiar with. You may like both, you might like one or the other. So I encourage you to figure out which one you like and use the foam out of it. Okay, when you put your armatures in, make sure they're all the way down and that they're tight. And you wanna just get them kind of tense because when you put your wire across the top, you'll go ahead and tighten it down and then they will actually uh, spread out a little more and put more tension on your filament wire. Okay, here are our keepers that go on the end of our armature. I already have mine loaded with wire for um, the sake of this video. You simply go in through the middle eyelet and up or down through the outer eyelets on the, on the edge of the keepers. And then you just simply twist it off. I would not... Um, I would just twist it so it just has a friction catch. I would not give a lot of effort into tying nice knots and things because as this wire gets hot and pulled and used, it will break. Uh, the best thing I can tell you when you purchase this tool is absolutely purchase two or three extra packages of filament wire. All right, the keepers go right over the end. It's grooved. Get your lock screw right in line with the groove and it should bite right in. Align both sides. Okay, I have a little more wire. I'm not exactly taut. You see, I'm, I've got some flexibility, and I like that because the flexibility, a taut wire will cut, will cut a different pattern than a flexible wire. So I can simply unscrew this and give my keepers a rotation and then tighten them down. And you can see I'm adjusting the tension on my filament wire without having to take it apart and retie it and reconfigure it. All right. Now, I would give these usually finger tight works. Uh, sometimes I need a little love from a screwdriver and it helps them hold in place. Okay. Now that the filament wire is in, go ahead and tighten it down. See the armature spread? You can over tighten it and you can crack the housing. I would not recommend that because then you'll be buying a new tool. Now, as long as your armature is down deep and it's making contact with the element, this will work. If your armature is too high and not making contact, whenever you push the button, the wire will not heat up. The wires have to be touching your keepers and they have to be tight against the armature. They has to have contact to make the electrical current go through and heat this up. All right, so I have some pretty good tension on my wire. Uh, I generally hold the button forward and give it just a few minutes to, uh, or a few seconds, I mean, to, to heat up. It doesn't take long. And surprisingly, it doesn't take it long to cool off. Uh, this will blister you, but for the most part, if you're not holding on the power source, it, it really cools off fairly fast and it's a pretty safe tool to use in the hobby setting. Okay, so what we want to do is, is let it come up with some heat, and then we want to introduce it to our foam. And look at that. Now, depending on the foam that you're cutting is how fast that you go through your foam. And see that the wire has some tension on it, and you can hear it pull and crackle just a bit. And I don't mind a little tension, but when I come to the end, I'm going to let off the tension and let it pull through slowly. See how slowly I let it exit? Um, the one thing I've learned is when you keep tension on the wire and you pull through the foam and it pops out like a fiddle string, that's when you break your filament wire. And then you have to stop your whole project and reload your filament. I just out of habit, I'm tightening that and you can already see that um, it's already, it has already cooled off. So um, now the direction that you hold your filament wire is going to give you the difference in your cut. See, I can lay it back and give it an angle, or I can go straight up and down. I can bring it forward and give it a reverse angle, 
or again go straight up and down roll it back in for a crevice or lay it back and again I'm coming to the end I let off and pull through slowly and there's a really cool uh, face for a rock or a rock front or any kind of landscape scenery so I'll show you this again real quick on um, more full block of styrofoam we'll just put it in and then I rotate the wire to the direction I want my cut and I can follow the line in this case I'm making my own I come to the end I ease off and let it pull through just let it melt through let it fall off and that's really kind of cool um, what you'll find is the more that you pull the wire and the more that you do your hot foam cuts the more that you'll come to your own style that you like and that will be your signature to your project so I wish you very well with this if you have any questions uh, please reach out to me and contact me I'll be happy to help you through uh, we do keep these tools in our store at Katie Dids and Grasshoppers and so and we keep extra wire uh, we keep foam and foam products and foam glue so in the next step uh, this has been pretty simple how to set up your a hot wire tool and how to cut with it so in the next step what we're going to do is I'm going to actually set out a small piece and we're going to make a small tunnel and end scale uh, and that way you'll kind of see how we or I build and start sculpting it from uh, start to finish off of a piece of ply wood and some some foam thank you very much